The paper I'm going to read for the seminar is entitled Selves and Forms of Life in the Digital Age, a Philosophical Exploration of Operatgeist. And Operatgeist is a moniker that my colleague and collaborator, James Katz, came up with to talk about what he started seeing in the early 2000s as a sociologist when he began exploring everyday life and mobile technology when mobile technology was first really becoming a ubiquitous part of everyday life. And apparatgeist means something like the age of being machine minded or the age of apparatus. So I'm going to bring ordinary language philosophy to bear on that sociological tradition in the paper. And the Mellon Foundation was very generous and gave us a very prestigious Mellon Sawyer grant and the topic of the seminar ostensibly was uh, everyday life in a computational world. And for me, the argument is simply that philosophy becomes more and more obviously important as we look at the world around us. Brings me back in touch with everything Stanley wrote in connection with film and popular culture and new media. And so this issue of new media and a philosophy of new media and what that would be and what it would mean to bring ordinary language philosophy to bear on emerging media and how people use it has been really more and more at the center of my attention. So this is really what the essay that I had you read is all about. I include in it a kind of reversion to Stanley's reading of Emerson and the essay experience. And the other thing I emphasize is this notion of forms of life. Forms of life are so important in Wittgenstein and Stanley was the first reader of Wittgenstein to see how important that notion is because it goes down, you might say, deeper than the notion of a language game. A language game seems sort of rule governed and maybe you could think Wittgenstein is conventionalist or something. Forms of life are not, they're biological even as Stanley notices. They're evolving, they're dynamic, they're places where we use our hands and our eyes and our gestures. So I think forms of life are incredibly important and I'm exploiting that notion a lot in my readings of some of these issues with new technology. And then with a little bit of history, I talk about the Turing test, which I think has been massively misread as some kind of Cartesian question about whether it's a machine or a human. And that is not what Turing was interested in at all, it seems to me. The Turing test is a social experiment in talk, how will humans interact with humans in the presence of machines? It's not about, you know, Blade Runner 1, where the question is, it's a machine or it's a human. And Turing himself talks about uh, predicting about the future of AI. And he says the cultural search, the search among human beings for culture is going to be the primary driver of creativity.